Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Holy Trinity on one of our Holy Week service evenings. It's good to be together this night. It is Monday, Thursday this evening, and we are celebrating First Communion. For many of you in the room tonight, I want to invite anyone who's receiving First Communion tonight to stand, and we're just going to give you a round of applause to show our celebration with you.
you can be seated. Please know we are excited for all of you. As your church, we celebrate with you on this special milestone evening. I want to make sure you know about all of our Holy Week services that are going on this week. And so tonight is our only service, but tomorrow for Good Friday, we have two services happening. We have a three o'clock service, which is an ecumenical service. We're partnering with St. Wenceslas and Faith Point at 3 p.m. tomorrow, and that will be held at St. Wenceslas Church. And then in the evening at 7 p.m., we will be here at Holy Trinity, and we will have a tenebrae service. It's the service of Jesus' last words. And so basically it means that the room will become darker as we hear the seven last words of Christ. And then on Sunday, Easter morning, we have two services, and they will be at 8.30 and 10.30 in the morning. They will be the same service. So we hope to see you at these Holy Week services, and we're glad to celebrate the whole journey with you. As you can see, our young people have marked these Four days, four parts of Holy Week, starting with Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. So thank you to all of our young people for marking that. I want you to know a few things about tonight's service. There will be three parts, and the three parts note the th three things that happened on the evening of the Last Supper. So the first part will be the foot washing which you'll see in just a little bit. And that's where we get the, the term Mondi from. It means commandment, and it's the commandment Jesus said to love one another. And so we'll begin with the foot washing. The second part will be the supper, and that's when we'll share Holy Communion together and have First Communion for many of you. And then the third part will be the betrayal. And this is where our service will end on a somber note. Um, we'll also invite all of you to leave the sanctuary in silence at the end of the service. So I want you to know about that ahead of time. But please know, as we come to Holy Communion this evening, you are all welcome to come forward and participate when it comes to that point in time. I'm going to invite you to stand as we begin in worship tonight, and we'll sing together, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant? forgiveness. Friends in Christ, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. We'll pause for a brief moment of silence, reflection, and self-examination. Join me, please. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let's join together in our prayer. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. You can be seated, and I'm going to invite any children to come on forward for the kids' message. Thank you, everybody, for coming on up for the children's message today. So I've got a question about when you get ready for a meal, when you get ready for a meal at home, what's something that you might do as you're getting ready for the meal? Yeah. Prayer? Prayer? Yep, that's great. Wonderful. What else might you do? Wash your hands. Have you ever been told you need to wash your hands before you eat? Yeah, we should probably all be nodding our head. Yeah. Have they been told to wash their hands before they eat? Yeah. Yeah. So we wash our hands. Why do we wash our hands? Why do we wash our hands? Get off germs and bacteria from our skin. Get off germs and bacteria from our skin. How about that? Yeah. Oh, so when you eat, your, your hands are clean for the plate? Yeah. Why else are you washing your hands? What might else be? Oh, yeah. So you don't spread germs. So let's say I went to dinner with you all, and I didn't wash my hands. And I was out in the yard, and I was planting some flowers. So my hands were all full of dirt. They're all full of dirt, all right? And then I found in my yard someone's dog who went to the bathroom in the yard, and I went and I scooped that up with a bag, but still, we'll just say a bag. And then, let's say my hands were, I never washed them still, and then let's say uh, I changed my daughter's diaper after that, okay? And then we came together for dinner, and someone passed me a big loaf of bread, and I hadn't washed my hands, and then I gave you that bread. Would you want to eat that bread? No. No. That'd be kind of gross, wouldn't it? Yeah. Sorry that was kind of graphic. I got carried away, I think. <laughs> So, okay, <laughs> very detailed, yeah, whoops. So actually, we wash our hands because it's not just germs, but also so that we, when we're at the table together, can pass food and everyone's welcome at the table. So back in Jesus' day, they also washed their feet. They washed their feet, okay? So people, people had sandals and they didn't have black top on their roads they had dirt roads so when they were walking everywhere their feet all got really dirty and so when they came into the house they washed their feet which was a way to clean their feet kind of like we wash our hands but also as a way to say you are welcome here you are welcome here we're not going to shun you at the table we welcome you at the table and so tonight we see that when the, the, when the disciples came to Jesus' meal, Jesus actually washed their feet, saying, you are welcome at my meal today. So this is what we're going to hear about today. We're going to hear about the story of Jesus washing feet in a couple minutes. Before we go back to our seat, Pastor Alicia has got an announcement here. All right, so some of you, if you were here on Sunday, already heard about this, but I want to make sure everybody knows about it. 
So we have a Holy Week passport. I see some of you brought them up here. That's awesome. If you didn't, we have some for you. But basically, it marks these four days, these four parts of Holy Week and Jesus' journey into Jerusalem. Since a passport is used when you go on a trip or a journey, you have your own. So we have one for everybody. If you don't have one, we have a couple up here. Bailey has some. She's waving them over here. But we also have more at the Welcome Center. So you can get one on your way out if you don't get one up here. But today's sticker, so there's a picture in the front. If you don't have a picture, you can get one on your way out at the Welcome Center. There's going to be a picture in the front, a Palm Sunday sticker on the first page. And then tonight's sticker is Monday, Thursday. And you're going to see there's wine and bread on the sticker. So you can get a sticker from my two friends up here. And if you need a passport, you can get one over here or at the Welcome Center on your way out, okay? But before you get one, we're going to have a prayer from Pastor Ben. All right. Let's fold our hands. Let's bow our heads and repeat after me. Dear God. Thank you for welcoming us into your home, into your meal. Help us to love others like you love us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. as well.
On this holy night, we gather for a special meal. And we recall the night of the Last Supper, where Jesus gave his closest friends, his disciples, their first communion. These disciples came each from their own places, wearing sandals, walking on dirty roads. And as they gathered on that holy night, they entered the upper room. They walked up the stairs into the entryway where it was common for someone to wash their feet. But this job was usually reserved for a lowly servant, a hired hand. As we learned, it was practical to do to wash feet because the feet were dirty, like washing our hands today before a meal. But it also symbolized something to these guests because washing their feet was a way to remove any barriers that might keep them from the table. Washing their feet recognized them as a welcome guest. In fact, during the Middle Ages, there was a common practice that church people, church members, who were public sinners, who had in some way scandalized the community, they were ostracized during the weeks of Lent. So the weeks of Lent leading up to today. They were kicked out of the church. And during this time, they were supposed to perform some penance that would make up for their sins. These shunned members were not received back into the church until tonight, on Monday, Thursday. On this night, they were welcomed back as forgiveness was extended to everyone. And the same is true for us. We are all sinners, this we know. We've all in some way violated the body of Christ. We're all in need of forgiveness. And tonight we remember that as the disciples entered that upper room, they were startled because Jesus took, out, took off his outer garment. He grabbed a towel and Jesus himself washed their feet. The leader took the form of the servant. And as he washed the disciples' feet, he set an example for them and for us. He showed us that God never tires of forgiving others. God never tires of giving second chances and new life. And as he did, as he did this, he gave them this commandment, a mandatum, which is where we get our word mandi from. This commandment that says, as I have loved you, as I have washed your feet, as I have shown you this kind of servant love, so you too shall love one another. So my question for you tonight is this. What would Jesus wash off your feet today? What's the dirt that you carry with you to the table tonight? Let us pray. Oh God, you are our servant, kneeling in front of your subjects, again and again washing us clean. So train us to serve others, that day by day we may be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from John chapter 13. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus
Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you'll understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. music from the bell choir. On this holy night, we gather for a special meal. Because after the disciples had their feet washed, as they entered the upper room, they gathered around a large table. And today we do the same. In the sharing of the bread and the wine, we participate in this great meal. We pull up a chair next to the disciples from that night. And when we gather around this table, we think of the Christian communities gathered around the world on this very night. 
And as we think about the Christian communities gathered around the world on this very night, we also think of the Christian communities gathered across time on this very night. Our ancestors, our descendants, because this common meal of forgiveness is how Jesus chooses to be remembered again and again and again. I admit it's strange how our most holy God, creator of heaven and earth, chooses to reveal God's self through the most ordinary things in life. Our sacraments are baptism and communion. God's self brought to us through bread, wine, juice, water. The sacred takes the shape of of the very ordinary, the most ordinary of things. And while baptism is a once-in-a-lifetime event, the supper is our ongoing food to sustain us in our earthly journey. Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood. By eating, by drinking, we become the body of Christ sent into this world. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the bread of life, giving yourself as the lamb who was slain. Mold us into the body you call us to be in this world. Amen. As we gather, we remember it's in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. I invite you to join together as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A few instructions for communion tonight. There will be four stations, one in front of each section of seats. You're invited to come forward, and as you do, you'll be given a piece of bread and then offered a cup of either the darker liquid, which is wine, or the lighter, which is grape juice. We also have gluten-free if that's a need of yours. First communicants, welcome to the Lord's table. We're so glad that you're here tonight. If there are other young people in the room or others who uh, would like a blessing, please know you're also welcome to come forward for that. And caring adults will be looking to you for guidance on that. If you'd like communion brought to you, please simply let an usher know, and we're happy to do that as well. All are welcome. Please come.
blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you this day and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. On this holy night, we've gathered for a special meal. But at the end of the meal, the mood shifts. Because this meal happened on the night he was betrayed. So after the Last Supper, the events moved rapidly. The prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, the betrayal by Judas, the arrest, the mock trial, the painful beating, the trudge to Golgotha, the crucifixion. We read Psalm 22 tonight as a reminder of the prophetic words from Scripture about God's servant who would suffer. Our time together ends soon but our worship service actually does not. It merely pauses. Because tomorrow the story continues. For now, a fast of the ears begins to set in as the music is silenced, as the sanctuary quiets. A fast of the eyes sets in as the lights will be dimmed and the altar stripped. We empty the space as we empty ourselves in sorrow over what comes next, in sorrow over the cross. So we strip our altar to recognize the life that was stripped from Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, you are our Savior, loving your people until the very end. Despite our human rejection, your love becomes our divine acceptance and hope of eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Amen. A reading from Luke. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour in the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I'm not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. 
And at that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. And then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the cock crows today, you'll deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Let us pray. We see dirty feet in a water basin and we hear, Love one another as I have loved you. We see the breaking of bread and we hear, The body of Christ given for you. We see the pouring of wine and we hear, The blood of Christ shed for you. Filled with your forgiveness and love, we see the emptiness of an altar stripped. And we hear the words, You will all become deserters. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Amen. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried, and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver you. Let him res rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from my womb. You kept me safe in my mother's breast. 
On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the, dust, in the dust of death, for dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. I will tell you of your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nation shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it.